Hello everyone, it's me Christy. How are we all? I hope you're good. It is officially July, which means whatever fun's over. How? Like, I had the best month. Um, it was so much fun getting to read all of these amazing books with all you guys and getting to do all the sprints and all the fun things. And I have to admit, I'm already struggling. Um, deciding to pick and books in July because I don't have a bingo board to fill. So <laughs> yes, um, I could just pick a book from my TBR, but you know me, just ain't my style. So yeah, um, that is not the point in this video. The point in this video is to tell you guys about the 15 books I managed to read in June. I don't know how I did it. My goal was six and I read 15, so definitely smashed that one out of the park. I do have my little like personal points tracker on my phone here. It doesn't really give you that much extra information anyway, but it does tell me that the total page count for the month was 4,380 for me. And the number of points I managed to get was 12,325. So I am definitely chuffed with that one. Definitely feel like I did good for Sunset Scholars. I hope you're all proud of me. Definitely proud of myself. So yeah, I hope you guys had a great month. And um, congratulations to whoever team has won, by the way, because at the point of me filming this, we don't actually know. So congratulations to whoever it is. Fingers crossed it was Sunset Scholars, but you know, it's chill either way. I read 15 books. It's gonna take me a minute to get through them all. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so book one of the month. I did start in May, but finished in June, and that was Scary Monsters by Michelle de Crester. Now, it honestly feels like years since I read this book, um, and I do apologize for the glare of the ring light. I will attempt to hold it at an angle. Um, but yeah, it feels like it has been honestly ages since I read this book. I can't believe I finished it in June. Right at the beginning of the month I didn't get loads of reading done because, you know, I just can't think why. There definitely is not footage of India and Madi on the screen. I definitely didn't go down to Birmingham to see Madi with India, you know. That definitely didn't happen. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously it did. But yeah, um, didn't get much reading done, you know, because I was, I was having some fun. I was away seeing some friends. So yeah, but I did finish this on the train um, on the way back up to Scotland. Scotland. I gave it four stars. My thought process was I loved the idea of the book um, and it's like two stories in one so like this is one half um, so you like start at this side of the book and read to the middle and then you flip it and then you read to the middle um, and you can't start with either story. You can do, who are the author's names, you can do Lyle or Lily first so this is Lyle this is Lily. Um, I started with Lily first because her story is set in the 80s I believe um, in Paris and Lyle's story is set in a dystopian futuristic Australia. So I figured like chronologically it made sense to start here. So yeah I liked it. Um, I enjoyed my time reading it. I think it was when I read it, I really enjoyed it, but for some reason when I wasn't reading it, I wasn't rushing to pick it up. It's a book that I picked up just like in Warstones, and it's basically just these two stories and you kind of, as the reader, have to piece how they fit together um, and all the different themes and topics that the story discusses. So I did find it really, really interesting and it's the sort of thing I definitely want to pick up more of in the future. If you guys have read any of the author's other works, I'd be interested to hear about them because I just feel like all of her books are very different but I would like to read more from the author if there are more things that sound my like up my alley so definitely need to do more research but I started off the month with a four star read I'm not going to complain the next thing I read was The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill Katie O'Neill I keep wanting to say K O'Neill I don't know why um but yeah this is by Katie O'Neill um obviously a super super short cute graphic novel um Pris gifted this to me so thank you my love I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading it um my train got delayed so it took me like 20 minutes to read and I had a fab old time five stars not because it was thought-provoking or mind-bending or in any way special but it was just stupidly cute. It was just incredibly cute and the illustration style in it is stunning. Like the colour, like the style that it's all written in is incredible and it's just super cute and I had a really really fun time reading it. There's not really much more to say about it than that. It's about two girls 
There are some mini dragons. It's really cute. I think this will be a popular one for Sunset Scholars if anyone who doesn't read high fantasy needs to cover the dragons prompt. That was this one. Um, super cute. Enjoyed my time reading it. Will probably 100% reread in the future but yeah, it took me like 20 minutes. Could I go wrong? Not really. <laughs> right, the next book I read was Anatomy by Dana Schwartz. Now this was on my TBR, so congrats to me for actually reading a book for my TBR. Unfortunately, I gave this one three stars. Now the reason this made me want to read it so bad and the reason it was like a five star prediction was it was like, it's historical, it's set in Edinburgh, it has medical aspects, it's dark, it's gothic, it's like there's romance, like it just kind of felt like I had everything I wanted in it. Um, but I read it and I was really really enjoying myself, sitting at solid four, it wasn't the best thing I'd ever read but I was really enjoying my time and then the ending happened and I don't know what made the author decide to go down that route but I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, it just takes this really weird twist at the end which obviously I will not spoil for you guys but it just felt like there were so many other ways it could have gone that would have fit the rest of the story so much better and it was like you were just kind of falling down this path towards a nice ending and it just kind of went whoa never mind 90 degree turn like let's just take you in a totally different direction and I just didn't like the direction it took me in but the writing in this was really good like I could really picture all of the settings which is exactly what I wanted considering it was set in Edinburgh like everything felt really good I was really enjoying myself like the medical aspect yes the feminism aspect yes but then it was just like what are you doing with that ending mate I just didn't like it like <laughs> what are you doing so yeah unfortunately didn't love the ending of this one but you know I'm glad I read it a book off my TBR. Enjoyed myself, wasn't the best thing I've ever read. Take from that what you will. I do apologize for the speed I'm going through these by the way. I figured there are 15 books and I don't want this video to be like 50 minutes long. So we're just kinda, we're, we're going, we're going. <laughs> the next book I read was Epically Earnest by Molly Horan. Again, another one that is gonna reflect on the ring light. And yet another one I gave three stars. Um, So I read this and I enjoyed myself. It was good. It was fine. Sorry if I was out of focus there. Um, yeah, I've not read the importance of being earnest, so maybe that's affected things. But I don't know. Like I read it. It was good. It was fine. Um, I did get an arc of this, so thank you so much to Harper360. It was LGBT, which I loved. Um, and it was kind of about like these two couples, but there's also like a cousin in each couple, so it's like two guys and two girls, and then a boy and a girl are cousins. Um, so it followed them throughout their time making all these decisions and like it was good it was fine it was nothing special I literally like have no criticism to make I just didn't love it like I just read it and it was fine and sometimes I like the short books but sometimes I just don't 100% feel them and I think this was just one of those instances where I just wasn't 100% on it probably wouldn't reread it I mean, if it sounds like it'll be fun to you, definitely give it, like, pick it up, give it a read. Um, but it's not one that I would shout off the rooftops and recommend to you all. So at this point, um, I was getting through my bingo board and I was like, okay, I need to kind of do a little bit of strategic thinking here. How am I going to finish off the board? What else have I got to do? And I managed to find three graphic novels that I could just read, finish off the bingo board and move in to a new fresh one. So um, this was on the lead up to the 48 hour readathon uh, and I think I ended up reading these in the 48 hour readathon if I remember correctly but don't quote me. So I'll go over the first two graphic novels which I gave both three stars and it is The Sad Ghost Club and Sad Ghost Club 2 both by Liz Meddings. Now these basically follow um I guess they would be really really good for anyone with social anxiety and um, very relatable and I feel like if you have social anxiety definitely give these a read I would definitely recommend yes I suffer with anxiety and yes it can be horrendous at times um mine is not usually social um so yeah I didn't 100% relate which I think is the reason that it didn't quite get above a three for me but I did enjoy myself they are super cute um I do think if they had like been in color or something it maybe would have helped Obviously not with me feeling represented in any way, shape or form, but just in terms of like reading it and just enjoying the experience a bit more. So yeah, 
Um, they were super cute. I enjoyed my time. 100% recommend to anyone with social anxiety. Um, but for me personally, I just wasn't 100% feeling it. Okay, we're nearly halfway. And the next book I read was Death Note Volume 1 um, by Tsumi Oba. Um, and this book, this, this book, this manga, whatever you want to call it, this story is so so fun um so i finished off the first chapter this is obviously the black edition um which has the first two standard volumes in it um so i guess kind of like the first half of the first volume um i was a little not underwhelmed but i think i was expecting a little bit more but once i got further in i realized it was literally like they need time to set it up do you know what i mean like give them a minute to set up the world, tell you what's going on, give you the information you need and then we'll throw you into it and throw us into it they did. This is so so good. Um, You will see later on, I did read the second volume, Um, I'm actually just going to speak about them together. Here are them both, Um, obviously um, I read both of these so the black edition volume one got like four and a half stars and then the black edition volume two got five Um, i really 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 thoroughly enjoyed my reading experience of these Um, i did read volume two neither at the end of the month but just realized there's no point in speaking about them separately because it is the same story honestly like if you haven't read death note before 100% recommend. Um, I'm going to be making my way through all of the manga and then moving on to the anime. This is the story that you need to read if you like the idea of like detective stories but you don't actually like following the detective. You know like if there's just if it's just a bit too like policey for you this is everything you want. Like all of the thought process but none of the police. Um, and it is just incredible. It follows this boy who gets like a notebook where if you write in the notebook someone's name and how they die um, within certain parameters you can kill them and that are like gods of death and his dad is like a member of the Japanese FBI. Honestly incredible. Highly recommend. I am having a great time. I own volume three, need to get my hands on volume four or six, but I'm excited to make my way through them. The next book I read was not planned in any way, shape or form, but I had gifted this book to India in the past um, and India had then gifted it to Maddie and they ended up reading it and it made me really want to reread it because they were telling me all of their thoughts and really loving it and so I picked it up again and reread it for what I think is like the fourth or fifth time. Um, I Love Him by Serena Bond and Elle Kennedy. Five stars again, it's a reread so I wouldn't expect anything less. I know how much I love this. Um, it follows two hockey players, um, Jamie and Wes, and Jamie and Wes run into each other at like a hockey tournament and then they end up at their summer camp that they used to go to together and it basically follows Wes who's like out and gay and Jamie who thought he was straight and it's like friends to lovers, incredible, would we expect me not to love it? Like this is the perfect friends to lovers, the perfect friends to lovers. I love this two pieces it is my favorite smutty read but there's so much more to it than just the sex scenes like the characters there's plot it's incredible honestly if you haven't read this please just read it like so good has been a favorite for multiple years every time i do read it it holds up like so good highly recommend okay i am back i apologize if the lighting has changed i had to stop filming for a second there but i am back i am refreshed and we have a few more books to speak to you guys about i feel like i stopped off at the right point because i just need a minute to collect my thoughts on the books that i need to speak to you guys about now because the next book that i read was a sound for the wild built by becky chambers now I have a vlog filmed of me reading the next four books I'm going to be speaking about because I was doing like weekly whatever-thon vlogs which I ended up scrapping them all because I didn't like them. I read them because they were Maddie favourites so it felt right to shove them all in a week during whatever-thon but I can't decide who I'm going to put it up so maybe expect it, maybe don't but I'm going to be speaking about them just now anyway. But this is a song for the Wild book by Becky Chambers. Now this book is literally like 150 pages, right? It's not long but oh my gosh does it do a lot in that 150 pages. Now this is five stars without a doubt, one of my new favourites. It's like I got I got this tabs out and I feel like you can't really see the tabs but there are a hell of a lot of tabs in this book for it being 150 pages and I don't even know how to explain to you what it's about. It's about a monk that meets him with a robot in this like sci-fi world where it kind of makes you question almost everything about your life. It made me laugh. 
it made me go into existential crisis mode I had no idea what was going on like there was so much happening in this book that I just absolutely loved this is not one you go into if you like plot this is definitely 100% character based so I'll read you guys the synopsis but just remember that it's literally about so much more than what the synopsis is going to tell you um, but it says it's been centuries since the robots of Panga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness never to be seen again centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend one day the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot there to honour the old promise of checking in the robot has one question, what do people need? But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how. They're going to need to ask it a lot. So yeah, robots basically gain self-awareness, they go into the wilderness and they come back and this one robot meets him with this one monk who's kind of in the middle of an existential crisis of his own um, and it's just following them on this cute little journey together. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely character based without a doubt. But honestly so incredible um, i am stupidly excited for the sequel and thank you so much maddie for introducing me to this and i hope a lot of you guys read this in june as well because it was a host fave the next book i read <laughs> wasn't quite as good as the first one it was double booked by lily linden now maddie very very kindly gave me this for my birthday this year so thank you so much um unfortunately i did only give it two stars i just didn't love it um basically this is the epitome of a bisexual book the bisexual rep all over the place. Love the bisexual rep. Main character, bisexual. There are lesbian characters. All of the gay people are literally everywhere, which was just fantastic. I had a great time reading that. Um, there were some really good conversations that came up in this, but honestly, I just could not get past the fact that I hated the main character. Like, I just didn't like her. I didn't understand any of the decisions she made. She was a horrible girlfriend. She was a horrible friend. She was a horrible daughter. She was a horrible bandmate. She was just... Like every decision she made I just didn't understand and it just totally threw me off being able to enjoy this in any way shape or form. Very 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 messy main character so if you like that this could be your book. Um, I know Maddie loved this like loved it loved it. I just didn't I just didn't like it. I just like literally the majority of the characters I was just like what are you doing this makes no sense I don't understand where you're coming from what's your justification for all of these very 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 stupid decisions you're making like I just didn't get it. I didn't like this one. I don't really want to dwell on it too much, but yeah, this wasn't my book. But hopefully some of you guys will enjoy it. It is a new release, so show the support. Please don't take my review as like gospel. Um, because like I say, there are so many people out there I've seen really enjoy it. So definitely look it up. It basically follows the main, like the TLDR is it is a girl who has a long-term boyfriend who basically realizes that she's bisexual and isn't enjoying what she's doing in life and it just follows her doing that. So yeah, again, definitely a character-based novel. Um, there is a little bit of plot in there, but mostly character. Hopefully some of you guys will enjoy it. Now, back to some good news. The next book I read. Oh, it was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This releases on the 14th of July. Everyone pick this up. It is so, so good. I had to get the tabs out on this one. I got an arc of this, um, which... I have honestly never been so thankful to get an arc of a book in my life because it was so incredible. This book, first of all, is stunning. I will be getting myself a physical copy as soon as it's out. And I cannot tell you what this book's about. And with all of my favourite books, that is the one thing I want to be able to say. I want to be able to turn around to you guys and say, I don't know what it's about. Like, it's so complex and about so many different things. It makes you ask so many different questions that what it's about on the surface isn't even what it's about when you get down to the nitty gritty. And this is exactly what this book is like. I guess on the surface, it follows like two or three main characters from when they're in college right through to when they're adults. It gives me a little life vibes in certain aspects in terms of kind of the way it jumps around a little bit with time and the way it follows the characters through a lifespan. But like little, a little life was like one star, the worst thing in the world. And this is like five stars, best thing in the world. But I mean, if you liked a little life, and it's gonna make you pick this up, take that comparison. If it's gonna make you shy away from it, please don't think it is anything like it. There are just certain little things that made me think of it. The actual story itself, the way it's written, incredible. It does not blabber on about pointless shit the way A Little Life does, which I, I, sorry, I just really don't like that book. But the way this is written, the metaphors that the like that the author takes to tell her story and to like convey how these characters feel there was like one chapter where it was like written from a bird's point of view but it wasn't a bird it was a person and 
it was like it was just so incredible it is something i could not put into words the amount i loved it it is 100% going to be one of my favourite books of the year. I can guarantee you that one. A Sound for the Wild Bill and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow are definitely like on par as favourite books of the year so far. And Galen, I'm having a much better reading year this year compared to last year, if you can't tell. Um, but yeah, honestly, absolutely insane. The way the author wrote this, incredible. The characters, so complex. Like, there was just so much going on. It made me laugh at certain points. The writing was incredible. The characters were so good. Like, there were certain bits where I was just like, oh my god, that was so adorable. And like, you root for one couple and then you root for another couple, but it's the same person. And it's just, I cannot put into coherent thoughts my love for this book. So I just need you all to pick it up and read it. And then you'll just understand yourself. Like, and this is Christy, who loves really short books, coming at you with like a 400 page arc telling you to pick it up and read it. So freaking good so good so yeah uh, basically in terms of maddie's favorites i had so far two for months accessory and i was rounding it out with a book i was almost positive was going to be a five star read for me and that is the house in the cerulean sea by tg clune now this is a book i have owned for like over a year maddie gifted me the paperback when i started my channel so definitely over a year um and i do have the really 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 gorgeous aluma crate version i really thought i was gonna give this five stars it was just it's my exact kind of fantasy it's like chill low-key cozy fantasy like it's gay as fuck it's like there's cute characters it's about the characters it's not about the plot but i just didn't see the hype i think this has suffered from me seeing so many people love it and rate it five stars and no one has anything bad to say about it to the point where i just feel like i was expecting more than what the book was ever going to be able to deliver um so it's not through a fault of the book for this one i don't think i do think it was just me um and my inability to look past the expectations that i had going into it so yeah, I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars. It follows Linus Baker who works for the government and has to go to this house that has like orphaned magical children and just check to see that they're safe. Um, and it obviously follows bigotry with people being different um, and these magical people being treated differently by the non-magical people. And it has all of these different themes and ideas and the characters were cute, but I also don't like kids and there were so many kids in this that were doing things that I think everyone else would think cute but I was just like wow that looks really annoying and not the best thing. Three stars, I enjoyed my time reading it, I doubt I'll ever reread it. Honestly please don't take my review for Gospel there because so many people have given this five stars and if not five, four. I don't think there's a single person on my Goodreads that is rated it lower than that so Definitely the unpopular opinion here. A little bit disappointed by this one um, and wasn't quite how I was looking to finish out the, the time where I was reading Maddie's favourites but you know, take what you will. I'm glad I read A Sound for the Build Built and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and I will take a 50-50 win. <laughs> So there we have it, we're nearing the end of the month, we only have two books to go and one of them was The Tea Dragon Festival by Kay O'Neill. This is The Tea Dragon Festival, um, it is, I would have spoke about it at the same time as The Tea Dragon Society but it is like the second book in that little series but this is a prequel so it was super cute again, really enjoyed myself. The illustrations are just as cute. Um, as they were in the past. So colourful, I love the style of it. Really, really quick read. This one is about double the size of the last one, so you get a lot more story in here. But again, five stars, so cute, very adorable. This one follows a dragon, not a tea dragon, but a bigger dragon that like fell asleep for like 80 years and woke up. Finally, the only prompt I'd left to get on my second bingo board was a last letter, first letter, and with that one finishing with an L. I decided to pick up Lucky Collar by M Mills. This was a book I picked up, definitely an impulse buy. It was like eight quid on Amazon for the hardcover, I think, so I just bit the bullet and got it. Um, but I actually quite enjoyed myself. Um, it's a YA contemporary, um, it follows, it's like France Lovers, follows this girl who is taking a radio class at school and run into a few issues. And um, one of the guys um, in her group is an old family friend. I'm sure you can guess where it all goes from there but yeah I, I enjoyed myself actually more than I thought I would. Um, there was a line in this where her sister, her older sister was having a bit of a moment and I was like wow I am relating. The the older sister, I'm gonna read it out to you just because it's the only thing I tabbed in the entire book but her older sister's having a bit of an like an identity crisis with college 
and it just says so to comfort her older sister she says to her it's not giving up it's just admitting that what you thought you wanted isn't actually what you want what's wrong with that and then the sister goes but i told everyone i made this whole big thing about following my dreams and living my life and all that and what am i supposed to do now just say i changed my mind i'm like me <laughs> me to a tea like I made this whole big thing and then I was just like yeah no I, I don't want to do it anymore so definitely felt that one um but yeah super enjoyed it really 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 cute family relationships in this one slightly unbelievable ending in certain aspects but what do you expect from a Y contemporary nothing less um but it was really fun I had a really good time and if you're just looking for a chill friends to lovers Y contemporary I would definitely recommend. So there we have it. I would pick them up but I don't really fancy doing that. <laughs> but those are the 15 books that I read in June. I'm super glad I managed to get to them all. I had what I feel like was a really 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 good reading month and it was all thanks to Whatever-thon. So thank you to Maddie for hosting as always. Um, I have thanked her myself as well. And thank you to all you guys for participating in Whatever-thon. I, I really hope you guys had a good month. Um, I know I definitely did. Check out the description where my Twitter, Goodreads, Instagram, wishlist, all the good things are linked. Subscribe to the channel. I am literally at 1.6k now, which I don't know how that's happened, but I've officially decided my end of year goal is 2k. So if we can get me there, I have some plans for August, some very tentative plans, I have some things going on. I'm hoping you guys will stick around and see them all, give the video a thumbs up and comment down below how many books you read last month. I'm interested to see. So yeah, here's an emoji if you don't know what to say. But apart from that, I will see you guys next time. Bye!